Boom, Leon here, welcome back. Today I want to do something different, something out of the ordinary for this channel. And it's discuss a theory that I believe has not been widely studied in the domain of human performance and I think makes all the difference. And this theory is George Soros' general theory of reflexivity, which is something that he has applied in the financial markets for over 50 or 60 years at this point, making him millions of dollars, right? Or billions of dollars. So there's actually some truth in everything that we are going to discuss. And it's super important that you internalize this because once you see it, you cannot unsee it. And you'll start analyzing the world around you in a total different manner. Now, uh, this comes because we have an internal Slack channel in which we share the latest research and interesting articles that we believe uh, can better shape the way we teach what we teach, which is, which is uh, how to maximize your performance, especially in entrepreneurship. Um, and then we also have a so master performance school, which is an ongoing school for our clients in which we keep sharing articles, we keep sharing research, and we keep honing everything that we discuss. And and this is very important because, as you probably know, or if you don't know, I'm happy to tell you, there's a massive replication crisis in science. So up to, I believe, 62% of papers within the social science, um, so economics, psychology, behavioral science, do not replicate. And that means that all those theories and, and are based on uh, research and studies that maybe go back 50 years in time that just cannot be replicated in 2021 or in the 21st century. So they're false. And this is super important because we pride ourselves to only teach the latest research and make sure that it actually fits the methodology that is giving our client results. I'm telling you this because it's totally related to what we are going to cover. That is nothing else than the circular relationship between thinking and reality. And this is something that um, has shaped George Soto's research throughout his life, but it stems from his time studying with Karl Popper. So this is a little bit philosophical, so bear with me, and a little bit abstract, but I'm really going to drive this point home and provide clear examples so you really understand it, internalize it, and start using it in your daily life. So essentially Karl Popper, who was teaching in the London School of Economics back in the 1950s, I believe. That's when George Soros was like 21 at that time, uh, in turn or studied with him. Popper said that there's no way to know with certainty an empirical truth, because all we can do is test. And one failed test of any theory is enough to falsify it. But no amount of conforming tests are okay to verify it, meaning that science is a continuous experiment, right? And those things that we hold us true are those that have been replicated time and time again. But if for whatever reason, there's one experiment that offers a different uh, result, then we will have to review all that science, right? This is exactly what's happening with the uh, replica replication science within the social science that I was referring to in a minute. So the goal of Popper's research was to say that in a way we need to operate with interpretation. And the best way to operate with interpretation is to build societies, which he called open societies, that could harbor as many divergent opinions as possible and use the rule of law to create prosperity for everybody within that society that everybody that hold those divergent views. And why am I bringing Karl Popper here? Well, because Soros comes from this idea of imperfect understanding of the world, and he compares it with the economic theory. If you're uh, familiar with economics, you know that economics is based on thinking that there's some sort of equilibrium in the market that all participants tend to. So tend to tend to go to that equilibrium and there's supposedly perfect understanding of market forces. And then in order to make money or to manipulate it, you just need to look at what the supply and demand and other laws, the economic laws actually affected. And this is in sharp contradiction with Popper's theory, right? So Popper said that nothing can be known for truth because no amount of verifiable experiments would actually prove some, something true because just one uh, one experiment that goes the wrong way 
invalidates the whole theory. And then economics says that there's a perfect market equilibrium point toward each market tends to. So there's just no reconciliation here. And this led to George Soros create the general theory of reflexivity. That is, again, it's about the circular relationship between thinking and reality. It's a conceptual framework. In a way, uh, just let's let's start with the finance part, which is probably the easiest to explain, and then we go into how does this affect your performance and, and a lot of aspects within your life. So, in finance, we tend to think that assets reflect their intrinsic value, and that value normally is calculated by the discounting cash flows, the future cash flow, right? So, do you take those cash flows, you bring them to the present, and say, okay, so this is worth this because it's going to generate that. The problem is the price is playing an active role in how that future cash flows are actually going to happen. So there's a two-way relationship between the actual price and what's the expectation of that price. Why? Because the person that is making that interpretation is a human being. And thinking implies manipulating reality. In fact, um, Soros says that thinking has two dimensions. The cognitive dimension, which you are uh, trying to get as much information from reality, goes from the world to the mind without interpretation, and then the manipulative function, which is from the mind to the world. What do I do with that information that I just received? So if you're looking at the price of an asset, you are interpreting all those cash flows, you're making assumption about those cash flows, you're making assumption about the price somebody is willing to pay now. So there's a two-way relationship between actual reality and the interpretation of the reality. And this leads to the theory of reflexivity, which is based on two premises, really. One is that it's impossible to know why, what, what are the assets, what's the actual price of the assets, what is the actual empirical truth. We are always wrong. And that's the fallibility part of the theory. And the other part is that the way we operate in that market, the way we operate in that reality is actually manipulating that reality. And that's the reflexivity. The point here that I want to make is that everything is open to interpretation. No matter what you do, no matter how much you pride yourself on being rational, everything is open to interpretation because you are using at any point in time the manipulative function of your thinking process. And if you want a clear example about this, um, let's say that I, I say that we are living a revolutionary moment. Well, that really is an opinion, right? How do we know we are living a revolutionary moment? And also think about it this way. I, even if I don't think we are living a revolutionary moment, I can probably capitalize on the forces going on in the world and do something that eventually creates a revolution. So I am able to affect the course of history by using the manipulative function of my own thinking. I can actually decide to manipulate what's going on in the world. But contrast that, for instance, to the natural science, right? Anything that is uh, purely nature-based is actually objective because we are not involved in what's going on, right? So a tree grows from being small to being big and then bursts fruit and that is carried by some birds to a different location and a new, uh, a new tree emerges. That's how vegetable reproduction works and there's no thinking involved there. We are seeing exactly what it is. This is to say that we cannot take decision basically purely on knowledge because knowledge, which is based everything on facts, depends on our interpretation. There are no laws that are actually universal. And you may be thinking, well, and how does this affect who I am, what I do? And why is this guy with a human performance focused channel talking about this theory of reflexivity that has been used mostly in finance? Well. I think this, this is absolutely crucial to harness the power of the manipulative function of your own thinking if you want to achieve and sustain peak performance because the way you think about something influences that something, right? So, and this is probably not new to you if you're familiar with the Pygmalion effect, which is, by the way, one of the, um, one of the studies that is feeling replication lately but we can also go with the self-fulfilling prophecy. 
the way you think about something is actually affecting how you money how you act or how you interact with that thing so you by thinking by by managing your expectation in a certain way you can affect the outcomes that come from the, your actions right so if you think you can then eventually you can it's just a matter of trying enough times in enough direction to make sure that you eventually learn and do something that you weren't doing before so that it actually works as henry ford said if you think you can and if you think you cannot you're both right so that's the first thing. By harnessing the power of the manipulative function of reality, we can affect our reality and make sure that we play our cards to our own benefit. And this is also related to the growth mindset. As you know, Carl Dweck, um, which is a, a psychologist from Harvard, I believe, she wrote a book about growth mindset. And essentially, she says that two types of mindsets, a fixed mindset, so those people that believe that they have um, their skills and abilities are limited by birth, by DNA, and there's nothing you can do to uh, grow and, and learn new things and outperform your past self. And there's the growth mindset guys that say, dude, you can learn anything you want. You can improve in several different directions. And it has proven that growth mindset actually works as a self-fulfilling prophecy and helps people develop much further and also has benefits and health benefits and stuff. So that's number two, right? So first thing is about the self-fulfilling prophecy. Number two is like about the growth mindset. Why reflexivity actually proves that embracing a growth mindset is actually self-fulfilling. And three is the sheer need of not understanding things purely cognitively, right? And this is something that we discuss a lot with our clients because there's a lot of folks out there telling a lot of people a lot of things, a lot of opinions. But until you try something and you harness data and you're able to really understand what was the experiment that you were trying to do regarding your own performance and you get that data, interpret that data and put forth a new course of action, there's just no way you are actually going to be close to objective reality because you don't want opinions. You want experimentation if you are willing to take your performance to the next level, right? And this is something that probably flies over the head of a lot of people, but unless you use data to grow, to develop yourself, you're just fooling yourself. As I say, personal development without data is just intellectual masturbation because we are very good at manipulating ourselves and trying to rationalize a lot of different stuff, especially our shortcomings. And the goal, if we want to really evolve into a different version and start crushing life at a peak performance level is having the cognitive infrastructure and the data that backs up our evolution, right? So these are the three uh, things that I believe this general theory of reflexivity by source proves. One, that the power of self-fulfilling prophecy by using the manipulative uh, part of your thinking, you can actually manipulate yourself into doing things and affecting the outcomes of those things to the growth mindset, which is obviously predicated on your ability to think and believe that you can improve. And finally, the need of not understanding things merely intellectually, but trying to prove yourself wrong, right? This is what Charles Darwin said. He was always trying to prove himself wrong. So when he finally published his theory, nobody could prove him wrong because he had already been proving himself wrong for 35 years, I think he spent uh, working on his theory. He had covered all angles. Well, you should do the same. And once you understand something that is replicable, you need to embody it. You need to really harness the power of embodied cognition and make sure that you're actually driving progress. And the best way to do that, well, is through data. So this was a little bit outside of our normal scope of videos, but I really wanted to share with you this article, which uh, it's very long, but it's definitely very interesting. And it goes to show why Source has made so well. And more importantly, it proves that we can harness the power, the faulty, the power of our faulty thinking to really affect everything we do in a positive way. Of course, if you have a proven framework that teaches you how to set KPIs, set experiments, try to prove yourself wrong in order to create an unbreakable version of yourself, like a peak performance version of yourself within your career or business, then hit us up because we have a few spots left 
for the next intake in the Submaster Evolution program. Cheers.